Burning Man story the girls at Burning Allen are flacking crazy. So I met this girl at dinner and we really hit it off. We spent the whole evening together and she was great, but something seemed a little off. Anyway, she finally takes me back to her tent and it's really romantic and everything, then afterwards we fall asleep in each other's arms. In the morning I kissed her on her forehead, but she didn't wake up, so I left and went to my own tent, which was like 20 yards away, figuring I'd see her at breakfast. But she's not at breakfast. And she's not at lunch. And she's not at dinner. Finally after dinner, I see her across the space and she comes right over to me with this weird look on her face. She puts her hand on my chest, looks deep into my eyes and says, Oh my god. You're so hot, I have to meet you. I looked at her and said, Sarah, it's me. Then she gets this really weird look on her face and says, How did you know my name? I story material burning man, romance, sex too. Be succinct. 3 lead in, the girls at Burning Man are tucking crazy. I'd say this animated and playfully, to convey that there's a story coming for. Initial hook, Burning Man crazy girls at 6. Allude, don't state directly. This story assumes that I am pre-selected by girls without bragging about it, which is much more effective than saying hey, chicks dig Emmy. 7 convey personality traits, I'm sexually open, I'm adventurous I take things in stride 5. Unanswered questions, what is Burning Man? Waff's Burning Man like? Are chicks always so attracted to you? What's wrong with this girl? What happened next with this girl? I'm cool with weird and unusual people and situations 8. Delivery is key. 9 PUNCH line, HOW did you know my name? The mystery method 118 using a lock-in prop sometimes while running the set, you are in the middle of negging and ignoring the target and she just leaves. To prevent this, lock her in using a prop. Put your feather boa on her, or your hat. Or hand her your photos, for your photo routine, and ask her to hold them for a second. N-O-W you have her locked in. At some point in the future you'll be able to continue with her, even if she temporarily wanders off. This also creates trust. By showing that you trust her with your prop, which she could steal, you also build her trust in you. If she starts to get restless, dangle some bait. Say something like, I have something really cool I need to show you in just a SEC. Locking L and imagine a two set is at the bar. They're charting, surveying the room and sipping on their drinks. It's not wise to open a set while they are waiting to order a drink, that's a recipe for a constant stream or interrupts in L and A2. Wait until the drinks are paid for and are being consumed. When you open the set, the girls will have their backs to the bar. They will see the entire room behind you, over your shoulder. But you will see nothing except the bar behind them. There is a slight power differential in your positions. As long as they are comfortable in their spot on the bar, and you are slightly less comfortable standing before them, giving them a superior line of sight, then there will be a leak of social power from you to the set. U-W-A-N-T to T-A-K-E their spot at the bar. The mystery M-E-T-H-O-D 119 T-H-E spin M-A-N-E-U-V-E-R, A-D-A-P-T-E-D-T-O steel H-E-R spot 1, you tell one of the girls, G-O like this and hold your hand out at chest level with the wrist bent. This is a compliance test. 2. If she defies the test and refuses to cooperate, you didn't have enough attraction. Do an IOD, then a DHV, then give her another compliance test. As you gain her compliance through this process you can eventually come back to this LOCK in maneuver and continue from step 3. 3. If she complies, she will hold her hand out to match yours. Take her hand and say, N-O-W do a little spin. This is another compliance test. 4. If she complies, spin her around and during this process, move her body away from the bar, stepping into her former spot N-O-W you are leaning against the bar in the power position instead of her, 
and she is facing you with her back to the room. 5. With a cocky and playful attitude say, oh, like you just tricked her and she totally fell for it. If you do it right, she'll be laughing and she'll punch your arm and call you a jerk. Both girls will also find you more attractive. Run another routine to keep their logical minds occupied and continue stimulating them, A2. Once you have locked yourself into the set, the perception in the room shifts 180 degrees. N.O.W. The girls seem to be all up on you, instead of the other way around. Instead of merely talking to the girls, it looks like you own them. This psychology trick also affects the girls themselves. Soon you are leaning back against the bar comfortably and your target is standing between your legs while you run the keynote test or read her palm. Sometime during A2 you should he locked into your set you want to he leaning hack against something while the girls face you, with their hacks to the room. The whole room should see you as the comfortable focal point of your group. The mystery method 120 role playing playful role playing builds attraction. Just invent some crazy scenario in your head and describe it to her. Make sure it's fun and playful, not heavy. Mystery, why oh you know what I wanna do with you? You and I are gonna go to Greece, and I'll dress you up in a toga and we'll sell hot dogs at the beach. Sometimes little bits of material like this are preferable to longer stories. Practice having normal conversations, but then peppering in little DHVS such as these. NOT only is this useful as an attraction tool, but it's also useful in the comfort phase, where it's useful to create a feeling of shared conspiracy. Style, why oh you know what I want to do with you? I want us to go to the beach together, and you'll wear a nun outfit and I'll wear a priest outfit, and we'll hold hands and make out in front of everybody. False disqualifies using false disqualifiers such as these has a disarming effect and also demonstrates value. In fact, they are identical to negs in this regard. These lines demonstrate confidence, fun, a lack of neediness, and a discriminating attitude that says I'm the one controlling the frame, I'm the one who is the prize, and I'm the one who is screening, you to determine whether or not you qualify for my attention. With practice, these IODs can be deadly. It would never work out between us. I can already tell, you and I are not going to get along. You're fired. You're too much of a nice girl for me. You're a dancer? OMG I can't even talk to you, I'm totally not boyfriend material. Hey, that guy over there looks perfect for you. We are so broken up. I want my CDs back. Your first impression sucked. The Mystery Method 121 The PEG System The PEG System is a routine that enables you to demonstrate a photographic memory. You can also teach this routine to the girl The act of teaching it is a routine in and of itself. First, you must memorize the pegs. They are, 1 bun, 2 shoe, 3 tree, 7 heaven, 8 gate, 9 line, 4 door, 10 hen 5 hive, 6 sticks, once you have these memorized, you are ready to perform this routine. The effect, pull out your trusty notepad and pen, and write the numbers 1 through 10 on the paper. Ask her to pick a random word to write down next to each number. For example, let's say she chose the words, 1 dog, 2 car, 3 water, 4 dancing, 5 cocaine, 6 outer space, 7 ugly, 8 airplane, 9 straight jacket, and 10. Back scratcher. After briefly studying the paper, you claim to have all the words memorized and in order. You can list them forwards or backwards. If she calls out a number, you can instantly answer with the word associated with that number. Apparently you have a photographic memory. The secret, you memorize the words simply by hanging them on the pegs in your memory. Remember the pegs, one bun, two shoe, three tree, 4 door, 5 hive, 6 sticks, 7 heaven, 8 gate, 9 line, and 10 hen. Word 1 is dog. The first peg is bun. Make a strange picture in your mind, of a furry dog on a bun, like a hot dog bun only with a live dog. This is a weird picture that you won't easily forget. 
so when she calls out the number one, it's easy to make the connection in your mind, one bun hot dog bun with furry dog the word is dog. Another example. The fourth word she chose was dancing. The fourth peg is door. So picture a ballroom full of dancing doors. Later when you are trying to remember the fourth word she chose, you'll remember four door dancing doors the word is dancing. The mystery method 122 using the same trick it is possible to go to 20 or 30 as well. For example, let's say she chooses 10 more words, for a total of 20, T-H-E-P-E-G-S, secret, chosen words additional words 1 bun L dot dog 11. Win 2 shoe 2. Car 12. Sailboat 3 tree 3. Water 13. Computer 4 door 4. Dancing 14. Casino 5 Hive 5. Cocaine 15. Guitar 6 Sticks 6. Outer Space 16. Book 7 Heaven 7. Ugly 17. H-O-R-N-Y 8 Gate 8. Airplane 18. Camera 9 Line 9. Straight Jacket 19. Jogging 10 Hen 10. Back Scratcher 20. Paper Clip for 1. You pictured a 40 dog on a hot dog bun. For 11, picture the same thing, except now it is blowing around in the wind. A furry dog on a bun, blowing in the wind. N-O-W you can remember that word 1 is dog, and word 11 is wind. For word 4, picture a ballroom full of dancing doors. For 14, picture the same thing, except add many casino tables such as blackjack and roulette. In this manner, you can continue to add numbers ad infinitum, in groups of 10. By simply memorizing the pegs once, you are now prepared to perform this routine on the fly with any new set of randomly chosen words, demonstrating that you apparently have a photographic memory. Part 2 of this routine is to teach it to the girl. The mystery method 123 various group scenarios lead the men and the women will follow. Many group scenarios occur on a regular basis, so let's get acquainted with them. Single set if the target alone? These are simplest but have a danger of turning into another scenario type instantly if her friends come to her side. In fact, all possible scenario types may change abruptly at any time. This phenomenon is known as an interrupt. You must be dynamic enough to alter your approach when this happens. A single scenario has no obstacles. You approach her straight out. There she is. D-O-N-T wait for eye contact too needy. Just approach her and when she looks up at you, look her in the eve and smile. If you see the girl from a distance and you've assessed the scenario to be a single, then you can wait there for her to notice you and then immediately go over or you can just go right over without waiting. But, do not get eve contact and then fail to approach, and think you can use that eye contact later to approach her. If you didn't approach her right away, the three second rule, then you blew it and while it's possible to still get her, you're now in damage control mode. Nothing is perfect really, but you want to minimize the time between when the girl notices you and when you approach. Smile and enter, and use any opener you please. And remember, though you are opening her directly, it's from a screening frame, not a begging frame. You are curious about her and interested to find out more. The opening statement can be a remark to that effect followed by a conventional opener and false time constraint. The mystery METHOD 124 two sets is the target with another girl. Mark the friend as your obstacle. Don't go straight for the target if she is not alone. The reason is that you will alienate her less attractive friend who will then act as a disgruntled guardian of the target and pull her away. You must win the obstacle over first. You can use this opportunity to not make eye contact with the target. When the target begins to talk, you can immediately NEG her, then go back to the obstacle. Doing this will make the obstacle laugh. It will also make the target feel a little self-conscious. Lock in the target using a lock in PROP continue talking to the obstacle, allowing the target to listen, until the target begins to attempt to fix her image with you from the negs. Then she will be chasing you. 
and eg her again. Then finally take time out to pay attention to her. Ask the obstacle if it's okay to talk to her friend. Because the obstacle likes you now, she will say yes. Or I guess. Don't spend too much time on the obstacle. 5 to 8 minutes is usually enough. If you spend too much time on her, the target will believe the obstacle really likes you and will disappear or try to get you two together. You have to make it clear once you see that the obstacle likes you that you switch your attention over to the target. Only time in the field will give you the calibration to do this properly. Finally, you will show the target a sign that you like something about her by complimenting her on her personality, not her anatomy. A good one is I can tell you are a leader. I bet you're the leader of your friends. I like that. It can be difficult to get a girl into isolation for comfort building when she is in a two set. The reason is that she will feel bad at the thought of leaving her friend alone. This is why it's useful to have a wing who can occupy the obstacle. In the ideal scenario, both girls will be potential targets. You and your wing then split the set, pull the girls and nail them both. The mystery method 125 three sets if the target with two or more girls. This is the same as the two set but you must disarm both obstacles first. Again, you get the acceptance of these obstacles when you neg their friend, the target. After you win the obstacles over and begin accepting the target's attention, you can ask the obstacles if it's alright to spend some time with the target. They will say yes because they like you. In fact, they may even leave you two alone. Let's see what adventure awaits us in that room. Put her on your arm, promenade style. Hey govs, I'm going to borrow your friend for a sec, we'll be right there on the couch. Hey guys, I've been ignoring your friend, I need to make it up to her. We'll be right back your friend and I like each other, are you cool with that? Uh, I guess, is it okay if I borrow your friend for a second? Uh, I guess, if it's okay with her, I like your friend. Is it alright if I talk to her for a-m-i-n-u-t-e slash j we kinda like each other, is that okay with you? I would very much like to see your friend again, is that alright with you? Dash great then we'll be right b-a-c-k dash good then can you give us just a minute because I've got to get going the mystery method 126 mix 2 sets is the target with a boyfriend. Assume that if a girl is with a boy that they are just friends. Go in and approach the man. Befriend him. Once you have disarmed him, then you can ask how do you know each other. He will tell you. If he's the boyfriend, you just made a new butt and didn't even introduce yourself to the girl so you can't get in trouble. If he's not the boyfriend, then she is now fair game. Remember to neg her politely in front of him. When she starts getting agitated or when she begins to try to get your attention, you can do a couple more negs and then finally pay attention to her. The guy will get out of the way and will watch you actually work the girl. You may be surprised how many times the guy just disappears altogether and is never heard from or mentioned again. Mixed sets is the target with two or more guys. Same as above, but you have to disarm all the males and find what the relationships are before you pay any attention to her. Pawning for a woman of particular quality, it is necessary to demonstrate pre-selection in order to game her. Before you open the set with the 9, you must first open a set with a 7 and attract her, and put her on your arm. She is now your pawn. With this demonstration of pre-selection firmly in place, open the set with the 9. It should open easily due to your value. At some point when you are in A3 with the 9, when she is earning your affections, you will be able to choose her over the 7, WHO then disappears, never to be heard from or mentioned again. The MYSTERYMETHOD 127 A pawn can be paraded around the field to build social proof. She can be used to open sets which will fly open with ease. She can be used to create drama or jealousy in later stages of the set. Pawns are often unwitting participants in your game, although sometimes they are willing. For example, 
Pivots A pivot is a female friend that you bring to the field in order to build social proof, open sets, create jealousy, and distract obstacles. In return for her services, you show her a good time and help her to meet guys. At times, a well-trained pivot can be more useful than a good wing. Forward and backward merging as time passes in the field, practice merging sets. Be that social guy who introduces people around. There are two principal types of merging, forward and backward. To merge forward means, to open a new set and merge your existing set into the new set. Pawning is often an example of forward merging. To merge backward means to reopen a previous set and merge your existing set back into the previous set. This can be useful. For example, if your target is in a two set, you will have trouble isolating her because her friend would be stuck alone. But by merging them into another set, creating a larger set, you can now 7 isolate your target. We're going to sit right over there and read her palm. Remember, you aren't just gaming the set, but the entire room. Is anyone else merging sets in this room? No. Then you must be the most sociable guy in here. The Mystery Method 128 How to practice your game Do the Mystery Method newbie drill for at least a M-O-N-T-H or two. Open three sets per hour, four hours per night, four nights per week. Follow the three-second rule. Have an opener memorized, as well as a false time constraint. Practice your delivery, including body language, body rocking, voice tone, comfortable attitude, and strong frame. Work on naturalizing your delivery. Release all expectation of outcome and just enjoy the process like a new hobby. Don't be picky about your sets it's all just practice. OPEN mixed sets. Practice getting locked into your set as early as possible. Practice multiple conversational every other night, add a new routine to your routine stack. Make sure there are at least one or two good stories to start out with as well as an accomplishment intro for your wing. Every couple of nights, add a new NEG, false disqualifier, some role-playing, or some other canned material to your routine stack. Play around with it. Push each set as far as you can just for the practice. Use Kino Escalation and Compliance Testing as much as possible. Chapter 6 Threads and Thread Cutting Feel free to go for phone numbers just for the practice. They won't amount to anything early on in your practice the numbers are all flakes. Call them anyway just for the practice. The Mystery Method 129 Chapter 5 Review In the A2 phase, you demonstrate higher value to the set while simultaneously negging the target. She will respond with indicators of interest which can he use to gauge your progress. Some IOIs don't happen without a minimum amount of attraction. A girl may be attracted enough to sit down with you, but not to leave the venue together. Using a combination of DHVs and negs, the Venusian artist disarms and befriends the obstacles. This enables him to harness the social proof of the target's peer group. At the same time, the negs cause her to crave validation from him. She responds by giving IOIs. This is A2. So, how do you all know each other? is a question that usually arises in every set, and it tends to yield very useful information. People who are well acquainted with one another tend to use multiple conversational threads while talking, whereas people who are newly acquainted tend to go from one complete thread to another in a more linear fashion. By using multiple conversational threads, you can create the feeling like you and the target are already old friends. The most important IOIs are, she laughs, she reinitiates conversation, she touches, and she tries to get rapport. Passive IOIs are sometimes the only IOIs that she will give. This is why it's important to use compliance tests while gaming. Girls will occasionally give fake IOIs when it suits their purposes, although most of the time people are not consciously aware of the IOIs they are giving off. There are also indicators of disinterest, or IODs, when a person gives an IOD, she conveys disinterest and an unwillingness to invest in the interaction. When a certain thread is not useful to you, feel free to cut it and introduce a new thread to replace it. 
Sometimes this is necessary even when it is your own thread being cut. Stories should convey positive traits and personality, and lead the listener through a fun series of interesting thoughts or emotional waypoints. The story doesn't have to be amazing or overly impressive, just engaging and enjoyable. Shorter is better. Sometime during A2 you should be locked into your set. You want to be leaning back against something while the girls face you, with their backs to the room. While you are ignoring the target, lock her in using a lock-in prop to ensure she won't leave if she gets bored or distracted in the meantime. A pawn is a girl that you have gamed and put on your arm solely to exploit for social proof, to open sets, and to create jealousy with your real ANEG is an innocuous statement that only a disinterested party would say. Negs are actually a form of IOD. There are three types of negs. The shotgun NEG, which conveys disinterest and disarms the group, the tease NEG which is cocky and playful and used for flirting, and the sniper NEG, which causes the target to believe that she has done a DLV, when in fact she has not. This creates embarrassment. Anything you can do that conveys higher survival and replication value is a DHV, or demonstration of higher value. Correspondingly there is also a DLV, or demonstration of lower value. Target. The Mystery METHOD 130 Chapter 6A3, Male to Female Interest She must be baited to invest herself in this interaction as a result, she feels that she now represents a unique value ONCE interest has been generated, the game is not over. If only it were that easy. In fact, it is not attraction that gets the girl. She must become invested in this interaction, and then comfort must be built. The attraction is useful to bait her into investing. Other than that, attraction is but a vapor. She might be making out with you tonight but that doesn't mean she'll return your calls tomorrow. It could be said that attraction is only a tool. In A3 you will use her interest, combined with takeaways and screening, to bait the target into demonstrating value of her own. When she demonstrates value in an attempt to win you over, reward her with IOIs, then bait her again as the process repeats. In this way, her reward is tied to her investment. As she demonstrates value, she is rewarded vet baited to demonstrate more value. This all comes back to peer bonding. A woman takes a much larger risk evolutionarily, and therefore emotionally, when she has sex. It's not enough that she is attracted to you the peer bond must be there as well. She must have some the mystery method 131 assurance that when she is pregnant back in the cave, you will stick around to bring her your fresh kills from the hunt. Otherwise you could impregnate her, move on to your next dalliance, and she's screwed. Of course, we are speaking only of emotions. Is it really true that the pair bond must be there? Obviously not, one night stands happen every day. What is the meaning then? The meaning is that she still has this emotional circuitry and it is a factor in her behavior. Her emotions prefer a man of high value high enough that it requires effort and investment in order to win him over. And her emotions do want to win him over she wants to feel that he is peer bonding to her. In other words, she wants to feel that she is important to him not just as an attractive woman, but as a specific woman. She needs to feel that it wasn't easy, she had to invest and there was some fear of loss, but now he is falling for her and she represents a unique value to him. This is all instinctive. When you can bait a woman into working for your affections, and you can convey your resulting growing pair bond effectively, you have mastered A3 and are ready to move into comfort and trust. Frame control The frame is the underlying meaning. It's the context, the implication the unspoken assumption in everything you say. If someone asks you, are the fish biting today, then he is implying that you have been out fishing. He hasn't said so, but the listener will assume it is true it's just part of the frame. The frame supplies meaning to the content. For example, if someone says yeah that guy got off, what is the meaning of that statement? Depending on the context, it could mean that the guy just got off of work. It could also mean that he beat a rap at the courthouse and was set free. It could also mean he had an orgasm. 
these are pretty different meanings. Whichever meaning becomes the accepted one is determined by the frame. He who controls the frame controls the communication itself. The mystery method 132 for this reason, when interacting with other people, there are little frame games going on constantly. Through their behavioral cues and subtleties in what they say, people convey their assumptions. If this conveyance is done congruently enough, others will accept the frame as reality without even thinking about it. If your frame is strong enough, you can get away with anything. This is the caveat for every piece of advice in this book. If you have the light frame, and it is strong enough, you can break every rule and anything will work. Your approach may be technically wrong, but she still responds. For a newbie, buying drinks for girls is a bad move, but everyone has a story where someone bought drinks and then got laid. So, which is the right way? The field will give you the answers that you seek. Go, and be in the field, and listen to your intuition there. Over time you will calibrate. Women will definitely test for congruence. If she can easily impose her frame over yours, this is a serious demonstration of lower value on your part. In fact, this DLV will most likely wreck any sexual chances you had with her. HOW can she rely on you to stand up to the big, bad world on her behalf, and on behalf of her offspring, if you cannot even stand up to her? The security she feels from being with a strong man is a primary factor in her unconscious sexual selection strategy. Beware. Some men in the field will also play frame games on you. If a guy can tool you in front of your set, then he can take your girls. She will almost always choose the man with tighter game and a stronger frame, and she will do it with little regard or loyalty to the fun little connection that she was previously enjoying with you. This is often true even if you are her boyfriend. The only factor that counteracts this is her level of investment in you it will be psychologically much more difficult for her to jump to the next man if she has already invested a lot of time and effort into you. The mystery method 133 hoop theory one frame game that people play is they will offer hoops, to see if they can get you to jump into their hoop. For example, a girl might try to get you to do something such as hold her purse or buy her a drink. Or she gives you a fake IOI to see if we'll start chasing her. You she gives a fake IOD to see if you get worried and react. She makes a comment to bait into showing off to you her. She asks something to bait you into explaining yourself to her or apologizing to her. These are all examples of hoops that girls will use to assert their feminine power. If you are doing things for her, chasing after her, showing off to her, reacting to her, apologizing to her and explaining yourself to her, those are all IOIs that she can measure and exploit. If you jump into her hoops, two things will happen. 1. She will feel really good about herself some part of her will be reassured on a primal level. And 2. She will lose attraction. Just because she likes something doesn't mean that it will get you any closer to having sex WITH her. Be careful. On one hand, you don't want to be the chump WHO gets tooled. On the other hand, you also don't want to be the social robot that is always playing power games when he should be relaxing and confidently enjoying his interactions with women. People aren't always trying to fuck with you. The MYSTERYMETHOD 134 WHENAHOOPDOESCOME along, the CHUMP is eager to J-U-M-P-I-N-T-O-H-E-R-H-O-O-P. He thinks it shows H-E-R-H-O-W-M-U-C-H he cares. He thinks it is romantic A-N-D will W-I-N her over. He thinks A-N-Y guy W-H-O does otherwise is a jerk. B-U-T-Y-O-U-D-O-N-T have to jump into H-E-R-H-O-O-P. Y-O you can turn it back on her. Or yo you can create a n e w h o o p just for her. Or you can ignore it entirely silence is often the best reply. S-O-M-E examples, put up a new hoop, ignore her comment, Girl, why are you talking to me? Girl, what is with your you, do you always wear your lipstick like that? You, Oreo you, to her friends is she always like this get this, 
start a routine shirt? Or grab her hoop, girl, will you buy me a drink? You, buy me a drink and we will see why oh you, hey guys, get this. Last weekend, my friend, and I start a routine EVERY conversation has SOME give and take. If she gives YOUAHOOP, it is actually okay to UMP into it, provided that you first get her to jump into one of your own. SOME examples of this, EXAMPLE1, girl, HOW old are you? You, guess girl, HMM.26? You, close, I'm actually 28. In the first example, she asks your age. But instead of answering straight away, you make her guess first. In the second example, she tries the same trick back on YOU but your frame is TOO strong. The mystery method 135 EXAMPLE2, you, HOW old are you? Girl, guess you, do you want me to guess low, or guess high? Girl, guess low. You, okay then. I'd say you look about 20 to An interesting thing about hoops, the more obvious it is that it's a hoop, the less likely it becomes that someone will jump into it. For example, let's say that someone asked you, hey man, can you grab me a glass of water while you're up? That's a pretty reasonable HOOP and most people would have no problem with such a request. But what if instead he said this, hey man, why don't you get up, go in the kitchen, and get me some ricking water like the little bitch that you are. Few indeed are the people who would jump into that HOOP it would be tantamount to accepting the frame that they are your bitch. So. Dot what you want to do is start small. Bait the target into small, innocuous hoops. Over time, as she falls into your frame, those hoops can become larger and more frequent. This process is known as compliance momentum. Soon she'll be rubbing your back and cooking your dinner, but for now start small by making her guess your age. Role reversal in the previous chapter we discussed HOW attraction can be created through role loving. A great role to play probably the best one is one where you have more social value than the target. In fact, this should be your reality, since she will otherwise find you less attractive. Subtle cues in your behavior will betray your assumptions. It's important that the frame you convey in those assumptions is one where she wants you, she is chasing after you, you are the one with higher value, you are the one who decides if you want continue with her, and you are screening her to make sure she qualifies for you. Notice that this is exactly what a WOMAN will do. Through little tilings that she says, she sets a frame that she is the prize. You don't want to get sucked into that frame. Instead, you want to grab this HOOP and use it yourself for example, a few minutes into the pickup, when you have some light kino, physical contact, you can say, you know, you're really good at this. Without fail, she replies, G-O-O-D at what, or what exactly do you mean? The mystery method 136 you reply, well you've been talking to me for just a short while, and you've already got my hand on your waist. I've gotta watch out for you. I'm not easy you know. Notice the unspoken assumption that you are the prize, that you are the one being chased, and that you are the one WHO decides whether or not this will go to the next level. If you will take any girl you can get, you must be a loser. But if you are picky, you must be a winner, and her emotional circuitry is designed to respond to winners. Some examples of role reversal lines, don't think you're going to get something just because you're buying me this drink. Geez are you always this forward. I don't want to rush things. I don't want to get hurt. I need lots of comfort and trust first. I want to get to know you better first. I don't do that on a first date. Hey, hands off the merchandise, this isn't free you know. I wore my old briefs tonight to make sure nothing happens. I'll be that. The judge of you just want me for my body. I swear, all you girls do is think about one thing. OMG are you groping me? You're a really nice take her hand, then as she reciprocates, pull back and say not so fast. 
Are you always fast? This. Yeah if you're lucky. I'm not ready to be in a relationship right now. Girl. That guy Oyer there looks perfect for you. I don't even know you. Let's just be friends. The above lines are examples of what someone with the right attitude might say. It's not the lines themselves that are important, but the internal strength of frame. When you have strong inner game, the right tilings will come out of your mouth automatically. Also note that when you accuse her of being forward, or trying to get you into bed, this doesn't mean it is true. It's not you are deliberately misinterpreting the situation. But if your frame is strong enough, she will get sucked in and respond as though it is true. Remember, she's programmed to respond to high-value guys. The mystery method 137 having standards H-E-R-E -E is what it M-E-A-N-S if you have no standards W-H-E-N it C-O-M-E-S to W-O-M-E-N, 1, I will take whatever I can get, which is not much. 2, there is nothing special or unique about you, I settled for you, because I have no sexual choice. I'm grateful just to find someone who is willing to fuck a loser like me, apparently that someone is you. 3. Being with me makes you feel c-o-m-m-o-n and used. Instead, if you d-m-o-n-s-t-r-a-t-e to a w-o-m-a-n that y-o you have standards, it conveys this, 1. I have a lot of choice when it comes to women. I am accustomed to success with women. 2. If I do take a liking to you, it is more than just for your looks. It is because you are a special and unique person WHO lives up to my high expectations. 3. I will only be with a quality woman and that's what you are. R-E-M-E-M-B-E-R, W-O-M-E and have antenna for this sort of thing. T-H-E-Y-C-A-N tell which way you lean and they will feel the resulting emotions. The average guy approaches a woman assuming that she is selective and hoping to pass her test. He thinks, God you are so hot, do you have a boyfriend? Can I buy you a drink? Because of this attitude, subtle cues in his behavior will convey entirely the wrong frame. She will pick up on this and lose interest. Correspondingly, the opposite is true if you have standards, subtle cues in your behavior will set the frame that you are a selective, high value guy. She will pick up on this and gain interest. She expects that a guy with potential will be someone who is selective. Here are some standards worth considering, an attractive woman who takes care of herself a woman who is sociable and has friends a woman who has a real thirst for life. A woman who has a great energy and chemistry when the two of you are together a woman who is not a flake a woman who is in touch with her own sensuality. She's not a baby anymore a woman who can seek after her own fulfillment instead of waiting for approval from her friends a classy and smart woman with an education a woman who is adventurous and has a great imagination. The mystery method 138 screening the idea is to get her hoping that she's good enough to qualify for you. After all, you are a high value guy. Sure, you're curious about her, but you want to know more. Is she smart? Does she have a lot of friends? Does she have a good relationship with her family? Can she dance well? You know what that means. What's the most spontaneous thing she's done recently? Can she cook? Is there more to you than meets the eye? What do you want to be when you grow up? There are lots of beautiful women here. But what's really important is the energy, the intelligence, the little tilings about a person that make her unique. What are some tilings about you that would make me want to get to know you better? If a magician came along and you could be poof anything you want to be, what would you choose? And don't say princess. If you had to pick one thing that makes life worth living, what would it be? Dash styles every routine. Who are you? Do you like animals? How old are you? Dash now disqualify, OMG, you're just a baby. So tell me, what are your three best qualities? Did you go to school? Are you smart? Do you have lots of friends? Can you cook? Do you give good back rubs? Are you adventurous? Are you a passionate person? There are some people who, 
they think they're open-minded and adventurous. They make all these great plans, they talk about meeting new people, or going on a diet, or taking a cool trip. But they don't. They just sit around doing the same old boring shit, over and over again. Are you like that? You don't want it to be explicit that you are screening her. Be very subtle, and she will realize it on her own accord, instead of thinking that you are trying to make her feel screened. Somewhere in her mind an attraction switch will flip and she'll think, hey, this guy is screening me to see if he wants to invest more. She naturally assumes that the man she is looking for will be selective. It's a behavior that she's been expecting and thus is a powerful DHV. It sets the right frame, it's the signal she's been waiting for, and it baits her to invest. The MYSTERYMETHOD 139 So how can you convey to her that she is being screened? By asking screening questions, by giving IOIs and IODS at the right moments, and by actually having real standards about the kind of people you spend your time with. It has to be true for you in order to cany the necessary congruence. Intermittence It is well known among animal trainers that intermittent rewarding is much more effective than consistent rewarding. The principle derived is that IOIs, given to the target as a reward, should not be delivered in a predictable manner. Uncertainty must be introduced to the equation, in order to make the experience more emotionally compelling, so that she can feel a broader range of hope, doubt, surprise, longing, fear of loss, and other drama. So the idea that we reward her with IOIs is only the simplest interpretation. In truth, we reward her investment with an intermittent and unpredictable mix of IOIs and IODS. This hot-slash-cold, push-slash-pull dynamic is very emotionally stimulating. When she is being rewarded in this manner, she is more likely to chase and to comply with compliance tests. The hot seat game What's your favorite color? What did you think of high school? What did you eat for dinner last night? And so on. Make sure she gives you an answer and if not then say, yes, but that's not an answer to my question. That'll show her gently that you are in charge. Now this isn't all of it but what you're doing here is showing a lot of interest. After all you are essentially giving her permission to talk about herself. They get over any self-consciousness pretty quickly by doing this, too. Plus, it gets them to open up and if they hit on something interesting then they'll maybe elaborate for you. But as I said there is more to it after they relax after the first few questions, you start throwing in some more personal ones such as, have you ever been to the hospital emergency room? How old were you when you first got drunk? Did you and your siblings keep secrets? Ever bad a very rough breakup? What's your favorite food slash vacation slash place to visit? Use your imagination, the MYSTERYMETHOD 140 Kino Escalation Kino is an NLP term and is an abbreviation for kinesthetic, which refers to the sense of touch. WHE and Venusian artists, and NLP geeks, speak of Kino, they are referring to physical touching of any kind. An important principle in the game is that nothing is ever a big deal. The typical chump takes a girl out on a date and then hopes to get the kiss at the end of the night. He wants to show her HOW respectful he is. As the evening passes, he comes closer and closer to that awkward moment at the end of the night when he has to make the big move and go in for the kiss. This makes it a big deal. If the moment of your first kiss is weird and awkward, it will probably also be your last kiss. Women are very unforgiving about this sort of thing. They have a fantasy about meeting the right guy, about how perfect it will be and how everything will happen so naturally and so right. And the truth is, with guys who have game, read, practice, that's exactly how it does happen. When tilings go down the right way, there never is a big moment when you go in for the kiss and make it happen. Instead, there is a natural how of Kino from the very early stages of the set that leads all the way to sex. It should be seamless a series of small, naturally executed moments, none of which ever stick out in any remarkable way. She feels like it's just how the two of you are together. Thus, 
the Kino begins in the early stages of the set, and escalates from there. Imagine two jellyfish right near each other. A few of their tentacles just barely brush against one another. Tendrils curl and touch, sliding off and then touching again. More tentacles join the dance spontaneously. Larger numbers brush against one another as a few begin to pull more strongly. There is energy between the two jellyfish, a powerful chemistry is building as they intertwine and draw closer. That may be a strange picture. But the point is that there is no single moment when someone makes a move. Instead, there is this subtle, plausibly accidental yet accelerating dance as the energy grows between them. It's this energy that's important. This vibe. This chemistry. The innuendo and the little hints and touches at first serve to add playfulness while creating plausible deniability. So do the touches create the vibe, or does the the MYSTERYMETHOD 141?